This is the story of JetBlue Flight 206. America's airports are busy. So busy that if you look at the world's busiest airports for 2022, 19 of the top 50 airports are American, with 4 out of the top 5 being American. The growth of air travel in the U.S. has been immense over the past few decades, despite huge challenges to the industry both in 2001 and 2019. But airport infrastructure has not kept up with the growth in traffic. Just to put into context how expansive America's aviation market is, Southwest currently operates 771 Boeing 737s. That's more airplanes than the entire country of India, the world's third largest aviation market. With so many planes in the air and on the ground, keeping them away from each other has become a challenge. On the 27th of February, 2023, a JetBlue Embraer 190 was making the trip from Nashville to Boston. As the Embraer 190 was getting into Boston, another plane, a Learjet 60, was on the ground at Boston getting ready for a flight that night. The Learjet was owned by the charter company Hoppajet. We don't know how many people were on board or where the plane was going as the final report for this incident is surprisingly short. So we don't know a whole lot about the plane. But the pilots who were piloting the Learjet were very experienced. The captain was a 63-year-old male with more than 22,500 hours of flying under his belt. And the first officer was a 23-year-old male with 2,300 hours of flying. On that day, the pilots of the Learjet had to cross runway 4 left using taxiway Echo and then get on taxiway Mike, which would take them all the way to runway 9. And that's where they would be taking off from. As all of this was happening, the pilots of JetBlue Flight 206 was setting the plane up for an ILS approach onto runway 4 right. As the Learjet taxied to runway 9, the ground controller at Boston asked the pilots of the Learjet to line up and wait on runway 9, so that the Embraer could land. The pilots of the Embraer lined the plane up with runway 4 right, and they took the plane lower and lower until they were close to touching down. They were just seconds away. Then, in the tower, an ASDEX alert sounded. The ASDEX stands for Airport Surface Detection Equipment Model X. In simple terms, the ASD is a way to track planes when they're on the ground, and it uses everything from radar to multilateration to satellite images to see exactly where the planes are on the ground. And more importantly, it can predict where the targets will be and generate preemptive warnings to warn controllers about impending collisions. Today, that was exactly what was happening. The Learjet and the Embraer were on a collision course. Taking a quick look at the ground radar showed that the Learjet had for some reason started its takeoff roll and was hurling towards the intersection of runway 09 and 4 right. The controller knew that she had to act fast. Immediately, she gets on the radio and in the most common professional voice I've ever heard, just says, JetBlue 206, go around. In the cockpit, the pilots push the engines to max power and pull back on the stick. The Embraer stops its descent and just at the right time. As the pilots were executing the go around, the Learjet screams by right in front of them. What's interesting is that someone in the cockpit of the JetBlue aircraft was in the jump seat and was recording the approach. So, we have a picture of the Learjet passing by right in front of the JetBlue airplane. I'll throw that picture up on the screen right now. It is truly scary. As the two planes passed each other, the controller told the pilots of the JetBlue aircraft to maintain runway heading and to climb and maintain 3,000 feet. The Learjet continued its takeoff run and climbed away safely. It was scary how close these two planes were. They were at the intersection of runway 4 right and 9. When the incident occurred, the Learjet was taking off and the Embraer was flaring to land. The altitude of the Embraer at that point was 30 feet off the ground. The tail of the Learjet is 14 feet high, which meant that these two planes were only 16 feet apart in terms of the vertical. For some context, these planes were 2.25 Shaquille O'Neal's away from each other. You have to remember that that separation is due to the ASD system warning the controller in advance and after the crew of JetBlue Flight 206 started their go around. If the ASD had not warned the controller about the impending conflict, then it is entirely plausible that Flight 206 would have descended even more, putting it at a real risk of clipping the Learjet. Thankfully, the calm and fast response of the controller saved the lives of hundreds of people that day. If you're wondering what happened to the pilots of the Learjet, well, when they were in cruise, the pilots had to take down a number to call when they landed. Yikes, would not want to beat those guys. So, how did two planes almost collide at the world's 30th busiest airport? It all came down to someone misremembering the smallest of things. The takeoff clearance for the Learjet. You see, the controller cleared the Learjet to line up and wait, which meant that the pilot had to go on the runway 
and then wait for that all-important final takeoff clearance. The captain of the Learjet said that he responded to the lineup at wait command, but in his head, for some reason, he thought that he was cleared for takeoff. Just to reiterate, he wasn't. So, the Learjet started rolling, and the intersection of runway 9 and 4 right wasn't that far away. So before anyone could really notice the situation that was developing, the Learjet was already blowing through the intersection. Yeah, that's what this near miss came down to. I thought I was clear for takeoff. That's all. The report for this one is very short and doesn't really go into the details of what exactly was the state of mind of the captain of the Learjet, or why the first officer of the Learjet didn't really catch the error made by the captain. If you have any idea why the captain confused a lineup and weight clearance for the actual takeoff clearance, then please do let me know in the comments below. But what's absolutely fascinating about all of this is how technology stepped in to save the day. In this case, before the controller even had an inkling that something was wrong, the ASDE system was like, hey, there's a potential conflict, you should do something about it. That allowed the controller to send out evasive actions way before anything even went wrong. Can you imagine if something like this existed at Tenerife in the 1970s? So many lives would have been saved. But to really see how technology has made flying safer, we'd ideally need another near miss in Boston that happened a couple of decades ago before this technology was invented. Well, are you in luck? If you've been a longtime viewer of the channel, then you'll know that we've talked about the 2005 Boston near miss. If you want to watch that video, which I highly recommend, and you've made it this far into this video, then you'll probably like that as well, then that video is going to be on screen right now. In the case of the 2005 near miss, for a couple of reasons that I talked about in that video, an A330 and a 737 were clear to take off on intersecting runways. Sound familiar? The pilots could not see each other at the start of their corresponding takeoff runs, but when the two planes came into view, they knew that they were on a collision course. The pilot in the A330 pushed the yoke down to keep the A330 on the ground while the 737 overflew them into safety. In the 2005 incident, it was fully see and avoid. That incident would have resulted in a massive accident if the pilot in the A330 had been looking down at his instruments or if the weather had been bad. But in the 2023 incident, this incident would have been avoided even under bad weather conditions due to the ASDE. So how does the ASDE work? Well. Any collision prediction system needs to know where the objects that it's tracking are. TCAS uses radar and transponders, and ASDE uses a multitude of data sources, as tracking surface targets are much harder than tracking flying targets. It all comes down to ground clutter. It makes tracking things so much more difficult. So ASDE relies on surface radar that's on top of a tall tower, most of the time the control tower. Then it has a bunch of sensors situated on the ground around the airport called multilateration sensors. Then it also uses ADSB data from the airplanes and the filed flight plan data to create a highly accurate tracking system that can accurately predict conflicts on the ground, much, much sooner than humans. The great thing is that this system works even in bad weather and low visibility conditions. So if this tech is so good, why isn't it installed at all major airports? Well, it is installed at 35 major American airports, but the reason that more American airports have not adopted the system is because it costs $550 million a piece. But in this case, it was that system that made the difference between life and death for everyone on both planes. It's really nice to see that accidents of the past are no longer possible due to technology. Let me know what you think of all of this in the comments below. Does the inclusion of technologies such as ASDEX reassure you about the safety of flying? Well, it does for me. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.